Last year, me and my friend Luke both quit our jobs and booked one-way flights to Thailand. We didn't really have new plans, but we did have some goals. We both knew we wanted to spend less than we do here in Perth, and we wanted to be in the South by December. I filmed pretty much everything that we got up to, including the good. That has to be one of the best things I've ever done. And the bad. We just drove past someone that was pretty much dead. And I've developed some pretty strong opinions on what you should and shouldn't do all throughout the country. So hopefully you can learn from our mistakes. So that's my We landed in Chiang Mai, October 1st, 2022. We originally booked this villa way in advance through Airbnb, uh, and to be honest, that's the last time we ever used Airbnb. It's uh, kind of a rip off. <laughs> From our experience, we ended up using Booking.com the most, but all the sites are pretty much the same. The good thing about Thailand is there's so many places available that you really can just book the day before and end up being fine. Anyway, after dropping our bags off, we just set off on a bit of a wonder to get our bearings. I shot them. <laughs> That night, after many near misses on the road, uh, we decided to call it an early one so we could uh, be rejuvenated for the next day. The next morning, the uh, skies were fairly clear and we could see this kind of big rock from our balcony and we wanted to go and explore and see what that was. So after waiting out the temperamental October rain, we decided to give it a squiz. So it turns out that big rock was actually a 60 meter tall ancient temple smack bang in the middle of Chiang Mai that was collapsed by an earthquake in the mid 1500s. Yeah, it really does feel like the entire city of Chiang Mai, especially the old town, sprawled out from this temple as a starting point. And I don't know, I kind of think that the rain added to it felt very uh, mysterious. I'll give it an eight out of 10. The rest of that day kind of was filled up with just basic errands and waiting out the rain. So the next morning, uh, the sun was out and the birds were tweeting and we were really trying to find out what else we should do. Now, we were fortunate enough to have a very nice view off of our balcony that faced onto a big mountain called Doi uh, And near the top of that mountain, we could see like this gold glistening light. And we figured there must be something up there. So after a further investigation, we found that you could do a bit of a hike to get up to the top of the mountain. But Luke and I really knew that we were going to need some horsepower. So the initial dream for the trip was going to be to buy bikes and then sell them at the end of the trip. Dreams were soonly shattered after figuring out that we didn't have the right visas to do so. You needed a working visa and we kind of looked into seeing if we could do it dodgily but uh, no, we didn't want to face Thai prison. And the option for renting in one state and dropping off in another wasn't there so renting for a month around the bigger provinces uh, was going to be our best bet. So after discussing with our Airbnb manager, we decided to go with her recommendation on renting out some 125 5cc Honda Click bikes for a week to kind of get a feel for them and she kind of gave us a cheeky discount as well so that was alright. Now it seems that Honda Clicks or 125cc bikes in general are the most popular for rentals around Thailand. You can get bigger, you can get smaller but obviously that comes with the price and reliability. Most bikes can cost from 100 to 300 baht a day and you can get better deals for longer rental periods but yeah we just kind of picked these bikes up and decided to get going. That's right. <laughs> I had pretty much never ridden peds before and seeing that didn't help. What the fuck? Uh, he ran a red. 
It's known pretty much globally that the roads in Thailand are fairly dodgy. I think that they have the second deadliest roads in the world. And with knowing that comes you know, a great responsibility. Travel insurance, wearing a helmet, it's obvious, but things like that. Sometimes they can even ask you to leave your passport as a bond for your bike. And you know, if the bike gets destroyed as well as you, you know, you could definitely be stuck. There's just so much, so much to consider. All right, let's just go, eh? I uh, have such a sore ass. I would not want to ride these for three hours. I can't believe that crash, man. That fucked me up. I'm going way slower now, eh? <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. That would suck. Our first stop on the journey was at a temple called Wat Fa Lat. <laughs> that has to be one of the best things I've ever done. Bro, I was, I was like smiling the whole time. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this was halfway up the mountain. And initially, as we parked our bikes, we thought this was it. But we could hear some running water in the background. And I think we uh, could figure out that there was a lot more to it. So we went to adventure. This place was initially built in the 14th century as a halfway point between Chiang Mai and the summit of the mountain, uh, or at least the summit temple. Things the size of your hand for sure. Who'd have thought? That Thailand is. I really didn't feel like that was that many people that knew about this place, and it was tranquil and green. And I give it a eight out of ten as well. Here we are, <laughs> embarking on a large vertical staircase. Now this temple was essentially just up the road from the other temple, given it's a long windy road, but you uh, end up in this little village and the village plays host to the essentially the entrance of the temple. And this is the temple that we could see from our balcony in Chiang Mai. Now to get up to the actual temple, you can either take the 400 billion stairs or you can take the coward's way out and to take the gondola that takes you up there. I think from memory it was about 40 baht to get up, but we decided to take the man's route and go up the many, many stairs. Now, I believe this place was also built in the 14th century and historically this place is, plays a huge significance in the you know, Buddhist religion and, and you'd expect that from seeing it from Chiang Mai Old Town, like this is not some run-of-the-mill temple. Uh, are you doubting their wealth? And from the top the views were breathtaking and everything like that, it was gold everywhere, you know, definitely a significant place to go. You kind of do you know, while walking around this place, get a sense that it is super touristy. Now, me being a tourist, I'm not helping here, but I don't know, it felt kind of gift shoppy. I don't want to be that guy, but it's how I felt. Gotta say it, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. One thing I would suggest is if you are gonna venture out and see all these temples in Chiang Mai, I'd probably suggest doing it as a part of a tour, just because I feel like my experience of these places could have been so much more enhanced by knowing the history instead of having to look it up on Wikipedia like I've been doing. That being said, these places are huge and historic and beautiful, so take what I say with a grain of salt. It was still fun. After a particularly stormy night, me and Luke had woken up and uh, we were kind of feeding a waterfall swim. We had found this one, like, the northwest of Chiang Mai that we wanted to try and visit, but getting there proved to be quite difficult. Beach vibes. It's pretty common knowledge that the rainy season, especially in the north, ends at the start of November, whereas uh, me and Luke kind of neglected that research and booked our tickets for the start of October. Uh, so we were blessed with some pretty heavy rain throughout our first month. But it seemed that year that it was particularly heavy, as we could see all over like the internet that there was floods everywhere and cars were getting washed away and all that, as you can probably tell by what we saw even. But, oh well, we got cheaper accommodation. So after we escaped pretty much the majority of the floods, we head northwest of Chiang Mai to this reservoir called Huai Tang Tao. I think that's how you say it. Anyway, this is where the waterfall was, but we had spoken to some locals earlier that day uh, to see what it was like, and they said that the waterfall was probably gonna be closed due to the weather, and that the reservoir itself was probably gonna be dirty. Uh, but we wanted to go anyway and check it out. The ride here was probably the longest we had done yet, and it was probably the longest that I'd ever been on a moped in my life. We were riding on the motorway, so passing trucks was kind of daunting. Anyway, as we arrived, we kind of followed this little ring road that circumnavigated the lake. Oh shit. And 
stop by for this, I guess you could call it a restaurant that was floating on the river. But me, as soon as we saw the menu, me and Luke both know that our white boy stomachs were not going to be able to handle this kind of food prep. So we hopped back on our pads and stumbled across this weird art installation that was amongst these rice patties. So much nature, but it's so hot. In the end, this place kind of caught me by surprise. The waterfalls were closed and the water was dirty, but the actual you know, landscape of the place was pretty sick. And it really was, I guess, exaggerated by the fact that we were there at golden hour, so the photos came out schmick. But would I recommend going there? I don't know. It's kind of more aimed towards young families, I reckon. I don't know, I'd give it a 7 out of 10, but probably wouldn't go there again, if that makes sense. That's the end of it. We rushed back to the North Chiang Mai Gate night market for some street food, which I was super keen for because that was like, I love food, and that was one of the things I was most keen for for traveling Thailand. <laughs> just looking for now. I guess some of the best advice I could give towards street food from my time in Thailand is just to kind of do as the locals do. Man, this is gigantic. Not necessarily eat the same dishes that they would, but and if the place is busy, then you know it's not going to kill you kind of thing. You can kind of use common sense to see if a place is going to be harmful to you. I guess if there is a higher turnover of meals being put out, then the food is probably fresher. I would suggest just sticking to standard dishes if you are kind of squeamish. Mm. Um, there's your like pad thais and your fried rice and your chili basils. They're kind of standard. Well, the egg omelets, they're pretty good. It just keeps on going. But I wouldn't say that you should never step out of your comfort zone. And some of the best dishes I had in Thailand were ones that I had no idea that I was going to like and I loved them. That's my tour. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much. Bye. Anyway, that night I'm pretty sure that we both just got some variation of the same noodle dish. It wasn't very clear on the menu. We just knew that we needed a big feed because we had a huge day tomorrow. I think no matter how long you're staying in Chiang Mai, a day trip to Doi Inthanon is pretty much essential. After we waited 15 minutes past the scheduled pickup time out the front of our Airbnb, our shuttle bus arrived to take us to Doi Inthanon, which is two hours south of Chiang Mai. When we came to booking ours, we were slightly naive <laughs> as we kind of gave in to one of the people that were yelling at us from the side of the road, but they'd previously helped us out with some information on mopeds and phone pines and whatnot, so we gave them a shot. From memory, I believe we paid $100 for a, I think, yeah, the whole day, including pick up and drop off shuttle services with the Living Green Elephant Sanctuary. Would I recommend doing this? Probably not. I don't know, it seems pretty easy to get scammed on the street if you're gonna do stuff like that. I'd much rather book online with someone like Get Your Guide, because at least then you know that you have the ability to get refunds and you know where your money's going kind of thing. But these guys in the end were very reliable. The first stop of the day was to the Elephant Sanctuary, which both me and Luke were most eager for. Yeah. After we'd arrived, we got changed into some pretty drippy uniforms and sat down and had a bit of a briefing, which was good because we essentially booked this thing blind with no prior information of what we'd actually be doing. But yeah, we got to get pretty up close and personal with these elephants. <laughs> Immediately after we walked in, Luke essentially got ambushed by one of the elephants. <laughs> Is a <laughs> After that, we got to feed them sugarcane and banana, but they were smart enough to distinguish that <laughs> they only really liked the banana, so they would hide all the sugarcane until they got banana, which was cool. Little did we know that after the dry portion of the morning, we got to walk down to a local, I guess, gully or river and we got to swim with them. Holy shit. Yeah, it's pretty safe to say that that was one of the most insane experiences of my life, let alone the trip. 
One thing to mention though is that with these elephant places you never really know the full backstory of what you're getting into and it's pretty well known now that not a lot of these elephants get treated with respect but I guess starting with a sanctuary is a, a good way to start. Apparently these elephants had been rescued from circus trade and all that jazz. I'm sure that these elephants are much happier than they were despite not being in the wild but yeah I mean that experience man it's still 10 out of 10. Can you see it? After we demolished some all-you-can-eat tofu pad thai, we uh, set off for the summit of the mountain. Fun fact, this is actually the tallest peak in all of Thailand, so you've got to keep in mind that it does get a bit chilly up there. Other than seeing some Zelda looking shrine, we learned that the mountain was actually named after a late king. Uh, before he died, it was actually just called Big Mountain. 8 out of 10. We next drove like 10 minutes down the road to the Twin Pagodas, which were meant to have some pretty sick views. Once we got there, we pretty much had to climb 455,000 stairs to get to the top of the first pagoda. And as soon as we got there, we could see so many clouds. And that's pretty much it. This place was actually built fairly recently in the honor of a king and a queen that had recently passed. Despite the potential views, I don't know if there's much else to it. It's kind of just a garden and it gave me Doi Sutep vibes. So keep that in mind. I probably wouldn't recommend it. Five out of ten. Anyway, it was by this point that me and Luke were actually getting pretty tired. We thought that the uh, the day trip had come to an end, and we got back on the shuttle bus and were told that we were about to do a two-hour hike, <laughs> which took us by surprise. As soon as we hopped out and started walking on the trail, though, we could hear the you know the boom of the waterfall in the background, and we were starting to get so keen. All the tiredness had left the body. Oh my god, this is so descent. The hike itself wasn't too difficult, but the October weather had left some fairly muddy patches, especially on the way down, and I was slipping on my ass. But the waterfall itself was probably one of the biggest ones I had seen thus far. 9 out of 10. <laughs> The last stop of the day was at the end of the trail, and it was at a Karen tribe village. I'm admiring. Can't believe first one. I fucking only brought the Rosen film. But then my camera's yeah. Now the Karen people are an ethnic minority around the north of Thailand, and we were blessed enough to be given some of their herbal teas. Is it like a modern selfie stick? Is that right? Or... Yeah, it was kind of a cooler experience, a bit of their culture. <laughs> Maron. <laughs> Oh, to cap off the last night in Chiang Mai, we asked our shuttle bus to drop us off to a recommended restaurant for Khao Soi, which is a delicacy of northern Thailand, and we loved it. Now this day was definitely one of the most memorable days of the entire trip. Sometimes it is just worth forking out a little bit more money than you would initially expect just to see some pretty extravagant okay, things okay. that you wouldn't really get to see <coughs> on your own mission. What's this stuff? Get your guide and places like that have millions of itineraries very similar to this one, so I'm sure you'll be able to find one for a similar, if not better, price. I rate it very highly. But yeah, for sure, 10 out of 10. After running some errands like getting our clothes washed and me sending some film back to Perth, we went to get our long-term rental bikes and we were off to Mon Jam. So crab omelette. Crab omelette. Mon Jam is about an hour's drive northwest of Chiang Mai, just past Hoi Ting Tao, and it would provide a nice little overnight stay for our drive to Pai the next day. That was, I reckon, top one moment of my life. Mon Jam would be more than just a little place to sleep though, as the place me and Luke booked was like some glamping spot up in the mountains. It was insane. Way more than we bargained for. This hey, is so I came to town. Yeah, literally, hey. Yeah. Cheers. Let's oh. go. Overall, Mon Jam seemed to be such an underrated place. There looked to be so much more things that you could do there that we just didn't have the time to do as we were just passing through. Dinner is served. Yeah, I'd fully recommend it if you could squeeze it into your itinerary while you're there in Chiang Mai, because it's really not that far away. Eight out of ten. Beautiful. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, had to take a photo. 
this combo. Chang and a Fujang. I want to scream at something. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> Luke and I may have had too much to drink with dinner that night. We actually cooked the hot pot thing, whatever it is, completely upside down. But yeah, we could tell in the morning that we were a little bit dusty. <laughs> yeah, I feel really bad. I need to like that. Mm. What'd you say? You're peeling. You should eat that. Nope. It's super sexy. Somehow. <laughs> Your hair's burnt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. King Kong. You can see him literally up there right now. We waited for the rain slash complete cloud to pass until we drove to Pai. The most common way to get to Pai is to take a shuttle bus from Chiang Mai, which takes about three hours. Now, because we were leaving from Mon Jam, Maps decided to take us on the complete wiggiest back roads in the world, and it felt like we were literally driving through Jurassic Park. It was quite surreal because as we were driving through, we pretty much saw zero people, so we knew that this was the most rural we had been. We were kind of concerned that we weren't going to meet back up with the main road, but somehow I was baffled to learn that we still had 5G the entire time, which puts Australia to shame. This reminds me that when we were in Chiang Mai, we went through the ordeal of getting a proper SIM with AIS, which is Thailand's biggest like SIM provider. We got 60 gigabytes a month for 650 baht, which was the max that someone can get without a work visa. I later found out there's companies like Airalo or Holofly that can do like package Southeast Asia SIMs or eSIMs for quite a good competitive price. The reason we went with a proper Thai provider is because we wanted the added security that when we're out in the sticks, we won't get stranded and lost. So, uh, Wait, it knows when it's full. Hmm. Give me about hundred. No. <laughs> Now we knew Pai had a bit of a reputation for being a party town, so after about one minute of research on Google we found out that the Pai Circus Hostel was the place to be. This would be both of our first time staying at a hostel which we found kind of intimidating at first, but it was good to actually meet some new people. E1. 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 Cheers for that. It's just a bed. This is age. Despite this, there were many places in Pi that were actually quite high up on my bucket list that I wanted to see. So I've put together a little montage of what I saw in my time here. Good dog. Figure out. We didn't really get up to much during the days here in Pai, other than feeling sorry for ourselves in our little hut. So after many extended stays, we took the last night to go to the Pai Bamboo Bridge for sunset and hopefully feel a bit better for ourselves. As we got there, we had about five minutes before the sun went behind the mountain, um, so it was pretty unphotogenic. I missed the sun. It was still pretty cool to see the rice paddies and everything, but I swear in the videos that the bamboo bridge looked much bigger. So disappointed with the outcome, we just went to a nearby restaurant and sat in their little hammocks and uh, watched the sun properly set. I'll give the overall bamboo bridge a 6 out of 10. The next morning we had an early checkout, but we still decided that we had enough time to go see the Pi Canyons, which were high up on both of our bucket lists. So long Pi! It's been detrimental to my health. The last one. Pie flavor. <laughs> Jump. So, my bag's too heavy to even attempt to go down that shit. <laughs> Loki might leave my bag there. Black look it. Yeah. As soon as we arrived, we came to the quick realization that we definitely shouldn't have brought our big bags with us, as the heat was essentially unbearable and they were heavy as anything. So we padlocked them to some trees and went climbing. One of my big regrets was not coming here for sunset. This place looked so cool. I probably wouldn't recommend coming here if you had an innate fear of heights because this place was fairly vertigo inducing. Really hot. If it wasn't for the heat, I'd probably give this place a nine out of 10, but it's gotta be eight out of 10. That was so hot. The next place we decided to go to was Changdao. Now, 
Changdao was about three hours away from us in Pai, but it's about an hour and a half north of Chiang Mai. The reason we're going there is because it's halfway between Pai and Chiang Rai, which is where we're eventually going to try to go to. It's pretty safe to say that that was the most intense drive we had done yet, both in duration and in aesthetics. We booked two nights in Changdao basically just to relax and do nothing, but we hadn't really looked into what there was to do in Changdao, so we were in for a bit of a surprise. But the ride to Changdao really tied the bow on what we had signed up for here, and I was so keen for it. As soon as we arrived though, it was basically park the bikes and go to bed kind of thing. I was shattered. Me and Luke both woke up rejuvenated and excited and kind of dug around on Google Maps for something to eat because we were starving. The place we ended up going to was pretty close to this big grey statue that we had seen in the distance as we were riding in and we really wanted to explore it so we set sail. I might just keep driving for a second to see if I can see a shot of it. That's fucking massive. Wow. Little did I know that I had just taken my favorite photo of the entire trip. While we were eating breakfast in an incredibly lonely cafe, we had found out about these caves that run through the underneath of the mountain, so we wanted to go and check those out. It also made us realize that we were the only white boys in the area. It kind of gave us a bit of a culture shock when we had no idea how to order breakfast. I wonder how much it costs. Turns out it probably would have paid to do a little bit of research before heading here, but oh well. There is an entry fee. Let's go this way first. What the fuck is that? Big oh. dog. Beetle. Ew. These caves actually go for like 10 to 12 kilometers under the mountain, but there's only five cave systems that are actually open to the public. Something that I wish we knew before we went in and only explored one of them. There's an admission fee for 40 baht, but as soon as you get in, there's a bunch of people standing around with gas lanterns. Now, turns out if we did go with one of the guides, they would have been able to take us on like a little trip around all the cave systems and only for 150 baht. Everything's in there. Most likely demons. I guess that was a bit of an L, but still cool to see all the, uh, Caves. After the caves, we had some dinner and pretty much just went to bed, concluding our time in Changdao. Now, I think that Changdao is criminally underrated and is so close to Chiang Mai. I don't see why more people don't come here. Just like being in the presence of the mountain was quite insane. You just have to bring your handy dandy translator app if you want to get some food. But other than that, it's sick as 8 out of 10 for sure. So next we were off to the city of Chiang Rai. Most people will just catch a bus from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai, which is about three and a half hours, but we were gonna be riding from Changdao to Chiang Rai, which for us on PEDS was gonna be about three and a half hours as well. Luckily, the weather looked okay, so we were keen for a good journey. Typical. Okay, let's go. I can't lie, by the end of that journey, I was pretty shattered. My arms were burnt to a crisp. <laughs> it was long. After getting our bearings and having a couple drinks on the top of our rooftop balcony thing, Luke decided he wanted to have an early night. But it was Friday, so I decided I'd go check the place out. Yeah, I have no idea how that happened, but the next day was Saturday, so I felt it was only fair for Luke to experience it too. 
So weirdly, that night, nothing was open. It must have been a holiday or something, but for a Saturday night, it was pretty dead. Luckily, I found a bar that I remembered from the night before, and we met this guy called Niall from England, and we just hung out with him for the night. The bad news was that morning, we already had to check out, and we were feeling pretty hurt, so we decided to splash out on a <laughs> pretty expensive place just to veg out in. I feel gross. I look a gross. <laughs> I'm gonna do so many fucking manners. Gee, off the road as well. Go to moments. Now, as we pretty much wasted our entire time in Chiang Rai, just being hungover again like we were in Pai, we were faced with a bit of an ultimatum. We decided while decaying in our insanely comfortable beds and full on KFC that we should probably cut down on the drinking until we're further south. Otherwise, we're gonna get nowhere. We also decided that we were probably gonna have to sacrifice seeing the famous cave that the football kids got stuck in, and we we're gonna have to pretty much speed run seeing every temple that we wanted to see in Chiang Rai after checkout with our bags. We weren't going to be speedrunning alone though, because Niall had agreed to come with us. How you doing? Now, we were meant to meet him at the Fish Cave Temple, or the Monkey Temple, where we actually ended up meeting him, was at the Buddha Cave Temple, which was super confusing because there was no fish or monkeys there. That's one big cave. Oh, really? There's a lot of bats. Bats? So we swiftly left. We were not there for long at all, but it was 5 out of 10. The next place we were off to was a definite upgrade, the Big Buddha. Back here. Why me? That's one big woman. This place was huge and super ornate. Oh, yeah. You go inside and catch an elevator up after paying like 40 baht entry, and then you basically get to see the whole of Chiang Rai from up the top through the eyes. Pretty cool. I give the Big Buddha 8 out of 10 onto the Blue Temple. Oh, that's more gold. <laughs> oh, they got blue restaurants. Very on theme. Okay, first impression on the blue temple. They got the name right, it is blue. It is blue. It's cool to see when you go inside that there are people and they're praying, but as you head on the outside, it does feel over gift shoppy. So, I would give this temple a 6 out of 10. The original plan was to hit the white temple next, but I had an inkling that it would be very similar to the blue temple, so we skipped it and went straight to the black one. There's a lot of wood. Now the last temple of the day turned out to not be a temple at all, but it was more of a museum. Now on the inside there were some like AR art exhibits which were pretty cool, but the most impressive thing was the outside. It kind of looked like the architecture of the building borrowed ideas from Japanese or Maori architecture, which I personally enjoyed. Not sure if it's true though. I'd give this one an overall 6.5 out of 10. Yeah. Alright. See ya bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah, wait, you've got to go there. Oh, okay. Now, after leaving the Black Temple, or museum, it was time to say goodbye to our friend Niall, because we were off to a place called Puchi Fa. Puchi Fa is the name of a viewpoint on the top of a mountain which borders Laos and Thailand. Now, Puchi Fa was two hours away from where we were in Chiang Rai at that moment. Puchi Fa is pretty much the entire reason we came to the province of Chiang Rai in the first place. This place has been at the top of my bucket list for so long, and it's pretty much the thing that inspired the entire trip. The problem is, we made it our mission to get there for sunset that night, and we had already spent far too long sp <laughs> spending time at these temples, which, I don't know, do I regret? Not sure. So we had to race to the top of Puchi Fa that night, no exceptions. So the race was on. After arriving to the base of Puchi Fa with little to no time to spare, after I may or may not have uh, stopped a few times on the way up to take photos, I made the, well we made the ill-informed decision to continue the rest of the trek up to the summit with our bags. Luke, with a much lighter bag, raced off ahead up the mountain, and I, with an obviously much heavier bag, trailed behind. Big mission to get up there, boy. Holy. Oh shit. 
Luke managed to arrive first and I slowly came climbing up afterwards, but it was in vain. The sun seemed to have set behind the smog. Thailand. If I am going to be honest, I am pretty disappointed that we didn't get to see the sunset in its full glory. Luckily, we were there for two more nights so we could see much, much more, which you will see in the next video.